Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sin Blackblade and welcome to a uh, Diablo 3 Season 19 Monk Patterns of Justice build. Uh, this is one of those builds that absolutely is amazing. Uh, as you can see in the background video, that is T16. So this is going to be an, a really effective build in farming, uh, in basically farming T16. Now, uh, at first, I was, I, I was actually uh, split into two types of build. There's another build that you guys can do, which is actually a lot more faster, uh, which involves uh, the Wreath of Lightning uh, unique gem. And uh, the, the thing about that is that you do move faster throughout the map, but the thing is you do not hit as hard. So uh, you kind of go into this compromise where uh, you, you can do high damage and one shot, almost one shot every uh, elite monster or, uh, and go slow. Or you can go like really, really fast and take a little bit more time into uh, killing, killing an elite pack or an elite mob. So I went with the uh, with the slow uh, with the uh, slower movement one, but you know it uh, it kind of hits like a truck. As you can see, uh, wait a minute, hold on, let me just get into or as you can just 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 watch the video while I fast forward to the last part over here. All right, so uh, we are going to be able to finish it uh, or finish this map at around this point and yeah so it's been really really fast the build is amazing uh and, and this new set item is really really good too and i hope that uh, uh blizzard continues to make all of this really crazy uh crazy sets you know for all of the characters and like change the meta a little bit uh right now uh, i guess they wanted to uh, do a test run with a monk and uh yeah i hope that they you know uh, they add more new crazier set items for uh for you know for the other uh other other classes so we're coming up on the boss right over here uh again this is t16 and as you can see it's really really fast uh although there is that one glitch i don't know if it's a glitch or if there's something wrong with my if my hands are just you know really finicky but yeah uh, there comes a point where you're you're doing the tempest rush and he stops or the monk stops and then you you, you kind of have to re-click shift and then your uh your tempest rush you know so that you you, you would continue uh temp uh, uh you know you would continue uh with your tempest rush and and it's really weird it, it's really finicky sometimes you know that's the only um that's the only complaint i have and right now, of course, you are seeing a uh, the, the highest uh, grip that I was able to do is grip number ninety five. Uh, I did die maybe one once or twice. You know, it really depends on what sort of uh, mobs uh, come after you. It's really random. Sometimes you get really lucky with all of the pylons and power ups, but then sometimes you get really unlucky. So yeah, uh, the the point is with this build, you can do uh, grifts up to level. Uh, up to level 95 and i'm just missing a couple of caldesans but maybe we could go to 100 once i uh, once i do it so uh, here is the final boss uh yeah it, the, the 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 damage being done is quite significant but it's still pretty slow because the <laughs> the monsters here here have what trillions of life so anyway it's still pretty fast and as you can see uh he's pretty much or the monster is pretty much uh, locked in place which uh, i will discuss later and yeah so that's it griff number 95 and let's get into the build proper all right guys so uh here's the build right here uh first off right off the bat uh, we are not going to be using the royal ring of grandeur here uh simply because that you know uh there are some comp compromise if you use it you'd probably uh, deal lesser damage or your cooldowns will be affected so yeah you can use uh the uh, royal ring of Gra grandeur it really depends on uh, what sort of play style you want so that will uh, entirely be up to you so here's the set over here the patterns of justice uh the two set uh, peace bo uh, bonus, uh, we have the sweeping wind gains the effect of every rune, which is amazing, and movement speed is increased by 5% for each stack of sweeping wind. So that's going to be an amazing combo with uh, the vengeful wind, which give, which increases our uh, sweeping wind stack, uh, stack count by 10, and it's damaged by uh, some number. I have 786 over here, but it goes up to 800%. Uh, 
Now, once you get the four-piece set bo bonus, uh, attacking with the Tempest Rush reduces our damage by 50% and increases the uh, Spirit Regeneration by 50. So that's going to uh, el that's going to allow us to basically uh, do the Tempest Rush infinitely without uh, thinking about our Spirit going down, which is actually quite amazing. Uh, finally, when we get the six-piece set bonus, hitting with Tempest Rush while Sweeping Wind is active increases the size of Sweeping Wind, which is uh, again really amazing. Uh, the, the 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 range or the radius is actually super big, and it also increases all damage dealt by fifteen hundred thousand. Or yeah. 15,000 percent, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, so you get all of those uh, from your head, shoulder, your chest space, uh, to your uh, gloves and pants, and then your, um, what do you call this, and then your feet. Uh, now first, let's go into our weapons. Uh, you, uh, Our primary weapon will be the Wo Kim Lao. The reason being is that uh, this does tremendous damage. As you can see, it adds or it, our damage will increase the Tempest Rush and the Cyclone uh, Strike will uh, increase in damage at 595%. Uh, the maximum is around 600%. So that's going to be really, really amazing. You'll be pulling enemies towards you and they will get stunned because we, uh, or uh, they, they will get frozen, which, we will, which I will explain later. Uh, again, we have Vengeful Wind over here. Uh, for our belt, we are going to be using Kyoshiro Soul, uh, again, because, you know, just to have our Sweeping Wind uh, active uh, all of the time without us thinking about it. Uh, sweeping Wind gains uh, two stacks every second. It does not deal any damage to enemies. So that's going to be good. Uh, this can be interchangeable because uh, every, now and often, uh, every now and then you could actually cast the uh, Sweeping Wind every time, but that's going to interrupt while you're doing your, uh, you know, your Tempest Rush. So yeah, having this one is a, a much better option. Uh, for our uh, for our bracers, we are going to use the uh, Caesar's or Caesar Caesar's uh, Memento. Uh, enemies take 708 da uh, increased damage from your Tempest Rush for five seconds if you hit them with a Blind Freeze or Stun. Now uh, this works because we are going to be using the Cyclone Strike uh, with the Wall of Wind, which then uh, freezes enemies for 1.5 seconds. Those 1.5, uh, this Cyclone Strike will be activated by the Wo Kim Lao, or you can pers or you can you know manually activate it if you want to. Uh, but yeah, then again. Uh, that's going to be amazing, and 1.5 seconds is enough for you to just ob obliterate what's in front of you. It is so amazing. Uh, for our rings, we are going to be using the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac uh, because I'm still having a hard time uh, or a difficulty uh, in keeping the Epiphany up uh, most of the time. So yeah, we're going to be using that. Uh, else, we are going to be using the uh, Endless Walk, which is the, comp uh, co the Compass Rose for the Ring and the Traveler's, Traveler's Pledge for the Amulet. Uh, this is to provide uh, 50 additional percent of, of uh, a reduced uh, damage taken. It's just going to make us tanky because uh, T16, the monsters kind of hit really hard, but you hit harder. So before they hit you, they're probably dead. So yeah, still it's going to be a, a good damage mitigation. Uh, so what else can you do? Uh, you can swap out uh, the Caesar's Memento with Nemesis bra Bracers, uh, but uh, that's going to be a lot slower. You're going to kill monsters a lot slower with this one. But then again, each pylon that you uh, that you interact with, you know, there, there's going to be a, a an enemy or a uh, an elite pack that's going to spawn out. So it kind of breaks even through. You're, you're kind of slow, but then elite packs keep popping up every time you see a pylon. So... It kind of breaks even, so you can use that. Uh, the the War Staff of General Kuang uh, allows our Tempest Rush to get the Tailwind Rune, which means that we will run faster. Uh, this can be okay too, but then I, well, we need to take advantage of the Wu Kim Lao uh, a lot more because this uh, gives a, our lightning skills an additional 25% more damage. So that's uh, multiplicative, and we need to take advantage of that. So yeah, you will be moving much faster, uh, but at the, but you know we will be missing on that 25% uh, more damage. But then again, if you get an ancient primal of this. I guess that's going to be good too, but then, you know, we will miss on the Vengeful Wind, which, you know, increases our stack count by uh, a maximum of 10 and plus uh, more damage on the uh, on the Sweeping Wind. So, yeah, 
uh, there's uh, you can play around with that depending on your style. But I guess, in my opinion, these two are still you know one of the best uh, in terms of damage. Uh, and then you can go with strong gram bracers. If you're, you're going with a strong gram bracers bi- uh, path or build, uh, you're going to change the tempest rush from lightning to uh, to again to a fire, which uh, this allows the knockback to happen, and you'll get that uh, some percent increased damage. But then again, this is I think is overpowered by the uh, by the 700 plus or uh, the percentage damage coming from Cesar, uh, Cesar's memento. So. Yeah, play around with that. Uh, again, uh, Witching R2 provides really solid heavy damage, but then you'd be casting Sweeping Wind every now and then if there's no monsters. So, yeah, uh, Witching R versus uh, Kyoshiro's Soul, I would rather go with uh, Kyoshiro's Soul. Uh, for what what you need, uh, if you can get Sweeping Wind uh, on your, uh, on your what do you call this? Uh, on your shoulders, that's going to be good. Uh, on your helmet, you can get to uh, Tempest Rush here, and the ideal combo is you have your Dexterity, you have a Critical Strike Chance, and then you have the Tempest Rush. I went with the uh, Crit Hit Chance because I kind of want my Crit Chance to uh, kind of be above 50%, something like that, because not all the time you're going to be you know, taking advantage of Balance over here, which uh, if you hit 3, uh, you, you gain 600, uh, your Tempest Rush gains... Uh, is is increase damage is increased by sixty six hundred percent, and you know when we hit uh, three uh, three enemies or fewer, uh, we get one hundred percent critical strike chance. So yeah, yeah, it will you know entirely depend on uh, up to you. But then uh, I guess what's going to be best is yeah dexterity crit chance and uh, the tempest rush. Uh, else I went with sweep and wind here because I couldn't get the uh, the elite. The uh, you know uh, elite mitigation uh, 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 apex, but yeah, you know you, you can go with that. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, get your definitely get your uh, tempest rush increased damage over here. Uh, okay, that covers it up. Let's go to the skills. I think did I miss anything? I did not miss anything. All right, so let's go to the skills. Uh, again, we are going to be using tempest rush with uh, electric field again to take advantage of the uh, lightning skills or increased lightning damage from the uh, Wo Kim Leo. We have Cyclone Strike over here, so that when the uh, Wo Kim Leo uh, uh, procs, it's going to deal, the Cyclone Strike is going to deal a cold damage, which freezes enemies for 1.5, therefore activating the uh, freeze over here from the Caesar's Memento. Or you can choose Blind, too, but that has a cooldown. So yeah, uh, the, the the this is a this is a better uh, this is a a, a better uh, option. And then we have sweeping wind with uh, whatever you want. Uh, everything is activated. I just chose uh, firestorm because you know it's visually really good. Uh, dashing stri- strike with uh, wave the falling star. Uh, I use this sometimes to move faster towards the map. So uh, there's a lot of things that you can do here. Maybe. So uh, you might want to play around with that one. This one's really good. So this is going to increase your the radiance is going to increase your DPS for four seconds. That's fifteen percent increase attack speed. So yeah, I just went with this one just to travel a lot faster uh, towards you, you know uh, towards the whole map. Uh, next, we're going to have uh, Epiphany with Desert Shroud again to gain that fifty percent uh, damage reduction, which is really really important for our survivability. Next, we get uh, Mantra of Sal- Salvation and Agility. Now, I chose this one because the 35 the 35% is actually really good, the dodge mechanic of it. Uh, I kind of found myself surviving a lot uh, in the Grifts 95. So, uh, you can play around, you know, with, with any mantra that you want. I just found this to be really, really effective in, like, dodging or uh, in the overall survivability of the build. Uh, next, or uh, let's go to our uh, what do you call this passive skills. We have resolve over here uh, for a dam- again for some damage mitigation. We have harmony over here again for some damage mitigation. Uh, this increases a single something of our elemental resistances, and everything is not up to par, but still it's pretty good to uh, it's something that's pretty good to have. Uh, next, we're going to have momentum. Uh, uh, our damage is going to increase uh, 20% if we move uh, for 6 seconds if we move by 25 yards. Since we are constantly moving by using our uh, uh, Tempest Rush, that is going to be active 100% of the time. 
Finally, we have Beacon of Ether here just to re reduce our cooldowns. If you're having a little bit uh, more difficulty, drop the momentum and go with Sixth Sense instead. Now, uh, that's it for the skills. Let's go with the uh, Paragon. Uh, max out your movement speed and everything with Dexterity. Uh, I started with, uh, on the offense, I started with cooldown, crit chance, crit damage, and then attack speed. On the defense, I started with life, resist all, armor, and then life regeneration. Utility, you start with area damage, resource course reduction, and then life and spirit, and then finally go fine. All right, so I guess that's about it. Uh, I'm still I'm still working on putting as much Caldesan as I can. Uh, I'm I'm stuck at 55 because I just really wanted to do uh, to do you know uh, T16 really quick. Uh, I'm going to probably increase this since I can do 95. I can probably do a Caldesan of 80 or 70, but that's going to take a really long time. All right, so that's about it for this episode, guys. Again, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about the build, and thank you all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'm going to see you guys on the next part of my video. Have a good one.